So Noelle and I are going to show you basically how to make your own laundry detergent. Uh, pay attention at the end of how much you're going to have left of all of the materials that you purchase. So you're going to be using borax, you're going to be using washing soda, you're going to be using um, some Dawn dish washing liquid and measure it out correctly and then see how much you have left and you're going to be making a gallon of dishwashing liquid. We're going to show you how to do that here in just one second. All right, folks, so I don't know if you can see me. We have to do this. I was trying to get Noelle's uh, phone involved, too, to do a cool thing, but her tripod's not working correctly, so we're going to have to do this. So what we're going to do is make our own laundry detergent. Now, I know that you can find this video or find this recipe all over the Internet, but for our subscribers, you may not have uh, found this uh, before or knew about it, but you can actually make your own laundry detergent. We figured that it's best to do that because there's so much, um, there's so many chemicals actually in detergent uh, that's not good for the environment or good for you. Uh, and given that we have a lot of eczema and skin issues in our family, it's best for us to try to find alternatives. And this is also very, very cheap to do um, and it lasts for a very long time. So we're going to actually do the recipe. We're going to show you what's actually in it, how to do it. Uh, and that should be it. It's a lot cheaper again to make versus buying um, even some of the organic stuff that's out there. So, what are we gonna have? Here's the recipe. Hi guys. Um, so this is for DIY detergent. So you use a half a cup of borax, a half a cup of super washing soda, and a half a cup of Dawn blue dish soap. And it has to be the blue, the like the original. Um, so you can see we have all of that here. So. I'll do the show. Okay. Um, and then you need four cups of hot water, but you're ultimately going to be using a gallon uh, of water because this will make a gallon of detergent for you. So, um, and we just got uh, purified drinking water, distilled water, whatever. Um, it was like 88 cents. So, yeah. So, here's all of the ingredients that you would probably need to get that you can find. Okay. Also, um, one of the other things that we have been doing, so um, as I talk, I'm just going to pour four cups of water and I'm going to heat it in, the, in our hot water kettle. But uh, one of the things that I realized that uh, with laundry is that dryer sheets are super full of poison and chemicals and everything else and with uh, all the eczema and skin issues and all of that, um, I actually use foil balls, which is cheaper, and um, we haven't noticed any issue with, uh, we haven't had any static because the foil like holds on to the static and everything, and um, I mean, the balls end up like really hard, but they help to make sure the, the clothes don't get tangled and stuff like that, so we're not using dryer sheets anymore either. Okay, so that's gonna heat up. Um, I am going to do my mixing in a more heavy duty container um, because this one is uh, a little more weak, but I will ultimately end up pouring it, the finished product, back into here and we'll use this as our detergent um, container. But I am going to mix in a more heavy duty so the hot water doesn't, uh, you know, warp it or anything like that. So, and while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and open my boxes. Or Herschel's going to open the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. One of the things that we like about the hot water kettle is, I have to get a knife here to puncture this, is that it heats water up really quickly. And not only does that help save on energy, because you're not relying on your stove, you really don't have to go through all the trouble of waiting on the stove to actually heat up and do its thing and um, you're able to get water very very hot very quickly and available for you. Uh, let me also open this one too. 
So I think I could probably press this one open. This one, you have to be careful, it's right there. Okay. okay. Yeah, and also like on the box of Borax, because like this recipe is only using a half a cup, but you can use it, it says, um, I mean, if you didn't want to make your own detergent or if you made it and you didn't really like it, you can also add this to your regular laundry loads. You can use it in the bathroom to uh, clean your shower, tub, and tile. You can use it in the kitchen to clean your sinks. Um, it enhances the power of dishwashing detergent. So there's a lot of different uses for it. I've also seen recipes for um, uh, that uses borax for like kids' activities. So. Um, I don't know if it's Play-Doh or what, but Borax is, is used in different kinds of kids' activities as well. And then the super washing soda, this is not baking soda, but it's super washing soda. But you can use it for laundry, for cookware, silver, copper, and brass, um, kitchen appliances, all kinds of different things for that as well. So, so I'm not sure how well you're going to see the, the fine writing on this, but I'll leave it here for a second. And you can either do a screenshot or you can pause the video to just kind of read it. But uh, basically, you can uh, use this for other things, obviously. And you're producing a tremendous amount of laundry detergent. You're not going to use all of this at all whenever you do make this. So once you uh, make this batch, you literally probably won't have to buy uh, laundry detergent ever again. And when you make this, this is going to last for a very, very long time. One thing that you should note too is when you do make this and you actually put it in your laundry, you're not going to see the typical large amount of bubbles that you normally are used to. Um, a lot of folks mention that, that they don't see a lot of that. However, it cleans just as good, if not better, than um, the, the commercial laundry detergent. Okay, so now the hot water is almost done and of course also the Blue Dawn is important because this was the original, the very first one that came out. It's important that you get a detergent, or a Dawn, I'm saying detergent. Yeah. You want to get the Dawn that doesn't have any sort of scent or fragrance. So if you get one like this, for example, it's not going to work. You don't want to use that. You want to make sure you get something like this because it's extremely strong. This is um, heavily concentrated as well, okay? Okay, so the water is just about done heating up, and so I'm going to go ahead and pour my ingredients in here, um, so then we can pour the water in there. So this is the, um, the borax. And the borax is very tightly packed in there, so you may have to kind of work with it. has nails so she's able to get in there. I wouldn't be able to actually break into it as easily. As you can tell the electric kettle has already started to boil. It just now stopped so our water is now ready. And I will set this here. Probably you also want to store this then in a place that's not going to be damp because it will clump. Um, so that's a half a cup there. So I'm going to pour that in here. Uh, let's use the funnel. So if you have steady enough hands, you can pretty much uh, just go about it by pouring it in there. If you don't, and you don't want it a lot of mess, then probably use just any sort of little funnel that's going to be able to uh, guide it in there a little bit better. Even a rolled up piece of paper. Yeah, a rolled up piece of paper works as well. I couldn't find my bigger funnel, so I'm having to use this little baby funnel. Yeah. I have a big one somewhere. That's with your beer stuff. Yeah. And uh, it would just shoot it straight down there, no problem. I'll give me a chopstick. Alright, so while she's doing that, I'm going to try to get this open. And also again, half a cup as well. Okay, so that's in there. I think this is going to go down a lot better than the Borax. Okay. Right. Half a cup. Yep. 
Okay. And then a half a cup of Blue Dawn. Yep. Now with the Dawn, we're going to wait to pour that in until the very last. The reason why is because, as you know, this creates a tremendous amount of bubbles whenever you pour water on it. Yeah, you want to mix it all together. Yeah, but you can put it at the end and mix it with a chopstick. Or you can kind of shake it around. Or we can, I don't know. Oh, they let's said try. to add it all together. Yeah, that's fine. Problem is you're going to have a tremendous amount of bubbles whenever you do it this way. You can also wait till the very end so you can actually put the hot water with the dry product, mix that together, and then fill it all the way up to almost the top of where this has it. And then before you finish, you can put the detergent in or the actual dishwashing uh, soap in and then finish filling it up with the rest of the water. Therefore, you don't have too much bubbles because what's going to happen is it's going to foam up with bubbles and then you're going to have to wait because the bubbles are going to force everything out. Okay. Some people will still keep going and let the bubbles drain out, but I'm assuming that you're losing some of the effects of the uh, Dawn if you do that. So it's up to you however you want to do that. I've read a lot of reviews on this too, and I mean we just have a standard washing machine, but people that use high efficiency, um, like front loading ones, this also works in those as well. So. I'm going to slowly start pouring and get the excess done, and that's good, and then just kind of give it a whirl. It makes a really pretty color. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, this color is going to Fade. get clearer and clearer uh, as time goes on because obviously uh, you're adding more water to it you can see in there. Yep. It smells really, really good actually, by the way. It's not too much suds. And then also, whatever container you end up using, like this will kind of start to settle. So before you uh, measure out for your laundry, you'll want to um, give it a good shake. Yeah, so just basically tilt it, tilt it back uh, back and forth a couple of times, three or four times, and uh, that's yeah, all you need to do. Yeah, it's not making too much suds. I think because it's hot water, maybe? I don't know. Could be. Now, the reason why we're using bottled water instead of regular tap water is the chlorine. Um, you know, it depends on you how you want to do that. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you're going to have chlorine in your water when you wash it. That's true. But basically, it doesn't need added. It doesn't need added. And uh, it's best to actually have water when you make it originally that um, does not have any sort of chlorine in it. Now, some people take their, when they do this, they use their sink to fill it up. If they don't buy bottled water, and because your sink is so powerful, it generates so much bubbles that you can't do it. If you see other videos after, you'll see where they've done that. They'll use their sink, and then basically it's just nothing but bubbles. We have a little bit of foam, but not as bad as others where at this point it would just be so much sudsy that you can't do anything with it. And as you can see, the color is still blue, but um, it is starting to change. And actually, I can probably just leave this water in here, um, let this settle. Once this settles, then I'll pour it into the container here. But basically, this is ready to go. Yep. So, and then the smell, it smells really, really good. So, um, one of the things that we do to make our, and am I correct, the vinegar makes the uh, laundry soft? Oh, yeah. We don't... Um, we also, so we don't use dryer sheets in the dryer, we use the foil balls, um, but we also, I also stopped using fabric softener as well, and instead I use uh, vinegar. Uh, 
the distilled white vinegar. So I pour that actually into my downy ball so that I don't have to wait for the rinse cycle and pour it in and everything. Um, you also don't want to pour the vinegar directly on your clothes because it can have a bleaching effect. But I put uh, distilled white vinegar so that goes into the rinse cycle and that keeps our clothes uh, fresh and uh, it, it functions as a water softener as well, so or a fabric softener. There you go. So that's pretty much it folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, once we actually uh, use this in clothing, uh, we will let you guys know how it actually turns out. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you for joining us. Until next time. Bye guys. We'll see you. Take care. So we basically uh, put the, I didn't put show you actually, we already put the uh, detergent in there. We put a quarter cup in and um, we're basically going to use, I mean this is a typical size washer and so uh, you put a quarter cup in, you're not going to see any bubbles as you can see the water is pretty clear but trust me it is going to be pretty powerful when it does wash okay so it's going to look like it's nothing but water in there but um, it will definitely wash. Once this is done I will do a follow up and let you know what it smells like and that type of thing alright this is what Noelle was talking about earlier. We use a downy ball and we basically put uh, vinegar in it. Uh, what we typically use is the uh, distilled white vinegar. Okay. Alright, so we will come back here in a second. Alright, so I'm going to test it to see uh, what it looks like. It's only been going for about, I don't know, about a minute. So let's see. I don't know if you can actually see, there's definitely no bubbles in here or anything like that, but the water is definitely dirty. I mean, you can tell, I mean, I can see it here that the water is cloudy. So uh, again, we'll see later on what this is like. Obviously the downy ball hasn't broken yet. Um, it's still, if you can see there, it's still intact. Um, but yeah, we're going to see what uh, this looks like once it uh, continues to uh, clean. And once it's completely done, uh, we'll show you guys, all right? All right, back at the wash. It's been, um, it's completed and everything else. It's on high water, so of course everything is drained out. So I'm going to grab some of Lil Zara Bean shorts. <laughs> So these are her little shorts that she wears and let me smell this. It smells pretty good. It's very very clean. It's very very clean and I mean if you've ever had a three-year-old uh, <laughs> you will know. Um, let me grab one of my shirts here. This is the one that I wore uh, for 4th of July. Let me smell it as well. It smells good you know there's no the one thing I can say is there's no um, smell of detergent you know so it doesn't have any sort of perfume smell like you normally would get from the detergents um, that you actually purchased I mean we've actually got ugh, this stuff here so with that yeah you can smell uh, the detergent you know it's it's every time you wash clothes you're going to literally smell it so yeah, like when you smell that, like I just smelled the lid and it's just very uh, strong. Um, so if you have, if you make this recipe uh, for your own detergent, uh, wash your clothes, smell your clothes, and then open up your old detergent and take a whiff and you'll see what I'm talking about. Then open up the detergent that you made and smell it and see the difference. All right, that's basically it. Hope you enjoyed and until next time, we will see you. Take care.